specifically. All right, cool. All right, so thanks. You should have the agenda in front of you. Um, I think there's a couple things that are at the top um, that I deadlines at the top. April 30th. Yeah, deadlines. And then I wanted to get Yash's thing up there about standardizing repo structures because yeah, poor Yash's work is always at the end of our meeting agenda yeah. and we always <laughs> run out of time. <laughs> so why don't we start with uh, the All Things Open and OSS EU, OSS EU slash OSS Seattle um, submission document that we have here. So. I think the submissions at this point are going to be focused on the DEI event badging initiative that we've been doing and having amazing success with. So for um, Charisse, we have a, one of the things that we've been doing is we've been developing DEI metrics and getting DEI metrics deployed and having a positive impact can be um, can have, can, it's just questions we have to think about, like how, how we can develop these metrics, great, um, but then also encourage ways that those metrics can have a positive impact in the world. And the DEI event badging program is one of those ways. Um, so could somebody drop the link to the yep. GitHub repo, to oh, the oh, just repo. GitHub slash badging? Oh. Um. Well, I guess you just gave it to us. Well, wow. okay, it's in chat. Thank you, Matt. So, Matt, I think at this point we're up to fifteen events, Eight, something like that, that have been managed. Oh, I think it's closer to twenty at this point. Cool. Right on. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this last time, but when we were doing a podcast with this was last week's podcast about the program uh we were talking to some folks at the lf events team and it feels like um the intention is to have all of the lf events go through this process uh, plus ancillary events as well so <laughs> so yay and also uh you know we're gonna it's the same like volume question that we have consistently. So just just for people to kind of know that's awesome, but it's also just kind of a reviewer question that we have in terms of kind of scaling up the available reviewers. <laughs> All right, um, so the, the link for the submission is, is there. Um, why don't we head on over there? Um, Matt, did you, do you know, or Ruth, is Ruth still on? Ruth is not. Uh, Ruth is, is still, on. I'm yeah. sure, is this the yeah. one that you want us to be on, Matt? Oh, you're, you're there. Yes, thanks, John. Sure. So do either of you know, Ruth or Matt, kind of the size limits for the DEI? Sometimes, have you taken a look at the submission criteria? Like sometimes yeah. it's 200 yeah. words and sometimes it's like 20 questions. <laughs> they have no um, specific requirements for length that I could find um, when I went to when I uh, I went through like half the application process to finally get to the word count and everything, and they yeah. don't have any specific things about word, number of words, but they do have like describe your project in a way that we can understand it and, and, and all this um, like kind of nebulous stuff. But it, this is the conclusion we came to based on that description of like what you're supposed to put in. Like, okay. They say the more you describe it, the better chance you have of um, like the, the more easily you can read it, the description, the easier chance it has to get in as a as a like a speaker thing. So uh, clarity. The clarity matters most, I think. And I, I'm sure foregrounding affiliation with the chaos project will be helpful as well. Do you want to put a paragraph in there, Sean? Just like oh. here, um, like the beauty of a, I mean, I don't know if I can write like this is written, but I, I can try. Yeah. Something like that. Not in this you know case. I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And to be honest with you, if when I can actually get on this page, I was going to change out beauty to importance. Yeah. I can do that. 
Hope you can do it without even doing it. Hey, <laughs> John's in trouble now because you know how I like to reward. <laughs> that was me that did it, so I'm in trouble. <laughs> oh, that's in trouble then. Yeah, because I could break up a little re um, preview in the agenda, but it doesn't want to pop up and open the actual thing. I don't know why. Maybe because I have a hundred tabs open. Could be. Yeah, I don't really love this new feature. So if you, there's the um, a new doc feature. Oh wait, I found the copy. All right, I'll just make another. Yeah, it's it's the new Google Doc thing that gives you the preview. And, yeah. and up in the upper right corner, there's like a pop it out to a new tab. Yeah, that's what I got. Okay. Oh, really? Okay. No, no, not where you are, Sean. Don't worry. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, so I like importance, but what about value? That works too. I just didn't like the word beauty. It just didn't seem to drive the point Matt was trying to make. But I do like value too. Okay. I know the, the word beauty definitely intimidated me. Like, I don't know how to write like that using those words. I didn't think people would get the point Matt was yeah, trying to make. I think you're right. Is this, is this okay, Matt and Ruth? Are you okay with value? Yeah, totally. Awesome. And Matt, <clears throat> excuse me, Matt and Ruth, this is a lightning talk. Is that right? Um, no, I'll let For you go, ATO. Ruth. Yeah. I mean, making the assumption that they're going to be live in Dublin, which we're all hoping for. Um, will you be no. able to go for just a lightning talk? If not, then I would say push to make it a full one. I mean, uh, for AT, for uh, oh, and OSSEU. Yeah. Um, ATO is like, an isn't an adjacent event, like right before OSSEU. I thought it was going to be virtual this year. No. I can look in my emails. So if we're going in person, I think it's worth it to make it make it a full talk. Yes. Uh, Ruth, you can share your opinion on that too. Um, well, and yeah, sometimes I you think... can get funding for full talks and not for lightning talks. Yeah. I'm bringing it up. Yeah. I think a full talk will also like do justice to the presentation. You know, or show out some of the uh, submissions we've had and badges we've awarded and a whole lot of good stuff. Sure. Yeah. So if, if ATO is um, virtual, maybe we can just keep it with this, what we have here. And clearly we'll have more time to yeah. rework a longer submission. My, my OSS. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, my experience with virtual conferences is lightning talks are, are better received than full talks. Cool. So, and I, as far as I understand, OSS EU is in Seattle. <laughs> yeah, I've heard that rumor as well, but I what? haven't seen anything official. <laughs> yeah. What? You got it. No. no. It's true. No, 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 no. There goes my incentive to apply. Um, uh, yeah. So reading through the ATO thing, it talks about people getting vaccinated in the Southeast. Paper, the CFP closes this Friday and that it's going to be in October, but yet OSSEU is supposed to be the end of September. ATO, um, their Save the Date website page um, says really in October 17th to the 19th. Yeah, so unless they're changing the dates for Open Source Summit EU as well as the town and country, then they're not together, if okay. that's important. It's not. OK. And it sounds like they're both in person at the moment. Yeah, uh, hoping to be. <laughs> OK. So Matt, is there a distinction when you were looking at the ATO stuff between a lightning talk and a full presentation? Like oh, I only looked at OSSEU so far. I, I haven't looked at ATO. I can put an action item in to do that or 
Yeah, okay, for I looked at I looked at ATO today. So there's I, I didn't see the option for a lightning talk, but there was an option, a 15 minutes option for uh, there's a way they described the talk. Uh, there's a particular description, something like uh, a short form of a 45 minutes presentation. There's a particular uh, so they have that option, then um it like they do not have a lightning talk option for that 15 okay. minutes option and then a full session and uh, keynote and cool. um, workshop so yeah okay so no lightning talk okay matt could you and even if it's in person and it's moved from europe to seattle i think getting funding for a lightning talk might be easier in country than international my concern is y'all y'all get the talk in and it's only a lightning source and you can't get any funding to go. So I want to make sure you have the best chance of actually going to present it. Okay, so I'm just putting an action item in for Matt to check out. Let's say we have Matt squared. Yeah. Okay. I'm also trying to see if anyone's heard that rumor about it moving to Seattle. Yeah, <laughs> double check me. I heard it, I think, from an author a fairly authoritative source, so. I suspect you know um, something. And so Matt, sometimes, as Sean had pointed out, these submissions, it's like a series of questions. You know what I mean? Like, who's the audience? Like, why? Yeah, Why actually, um, um, since I'm going to be gone for the next meeting, I wanted to ask Ruth, would you be able to take up this action and look at the capability of the ATO submission? Okay, so um, I think I looked through that also, and the different questions there were, um, okay, the talk title, the abstract, right? And there was no limit for the abstract. And then um, speaker, each um, you have the speaker bio, and if you're adding like a second um, speaker, right? And uh, I think they did not ask about the, there was no question about audience, right? As of other conferences where they asked, okay, what is expected of the audience or what do you expect uh, the audience to know before this talk? So there are just those- There is, um, there is or is not that question. Yeah. Is that question not. there or not? Okay, that's what I thought. Not. So it's just no. abstract speaker and second speaker. Yeah, if you add any second speaker, then um, the uh, title of the talk. Oh yeah. Talk okay. title. That's for ATU. Yeah. Gotcha. Well, I, Thank I think, you. I think I think OSSE has like more a whole lot of fields. Gotcha. They have a whole lot of fields. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, Ruth, do you plan on going to ATO? Do you have any hopes of getting to LA? Yeah, I do. Actually, uh, part of the perks for GitHub Stars is they could, you know, fund your a conference, uh, fund conference travel for you. So I could, you know, if it's going to be in person, I would um, either apply if there's a funding from ATO or OSSEU or talk with uh, GitHub. Okay. Would you have a preference, Ruth, for um, OSSEU or ATO? I mean, we can always put you down for either. Uh, or any of them. <laughs> okay. Both. Yeah, either or both. Okay. Okay. So maybe for the ATO, Matt, would you plan on going to ATO? Yeah, I'd like to start going, if they're in person, I'd like to start being able to go to um, ATO or OSSEU or possibly both. Okay, so for ATO, I think we have pretty much everything we need, it looks like. Yeah. And so for yeah. speakers, would Matt, could we put you and Ruth, could we I'll, put you down? I want to allow, Ruth, if you want to be primary, I'm going to give you that spot. Yeah, you, you're going to think it. <laughs> I mean, ulti ultimately, you can figure that out later. Um, yeah, yeah, you can list one, you can, yeah, you can list each other in whatever order you choose. 
Um, it might help if Ruth is first. I oh, that's fair. Yeah. That. Oh, I yeah. Say it, but it might help. No, especially fair. for OSS. Ruth, are you okay with that? For the o yeah, sure. E I am. ATO and okay. Yeah. And then obviously, if like from a funding perspective, we, let's we can work that out. Okay. In some okay. form or fashion, I think. Cool. Right on. Okay. Um, well, thank you. I guess, I guess what you need is a talk title. That's the only thing. It's at the top. I thought that was the title. Oh, that is the talk title. Okay. Okay. There we go. Yeah. All right. Or should we make it into something catchy? So no, it doesn't need to be any more catchy than that. I just now we didn't even talk to. Yeah, basically uh, now Ruth uh, entering into the competition is a matter of check, basically copy and paste. Right on. So Ruth, can you do the submission, or do you want somebody else to do it? Okay, so I you? I think I've had um, some issues with submitting. Right, even okay. I want to submit it, but it kept giving an error or something. I do gotcha. not know why it does that. Matt, would you be able to submit? Yeah, I can submit. Do Friday. So I'll just uh, send you, um, I'll send you my details, Matt, if you ask now. That's good. And um, if you if you send me your details, can you also send me the link to the CFP? I've had trouble finding yeah. it personally. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. This is great. Thank you, everybody. And as was pointed out in the chat, OSS EU is in Seattle. <laughs> it's official. Like there's a whole website for it. Yeah. <laughs> and okay. By Red Hat. Are they still calling it OSS EU? Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. So what we're hearing is that Washington is seceding from the United States and joining the European Union. Just temporarily. Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't doubt it. I, I, <laughs> that's that's never, nothing surprises me anymore. The EU has agreed to this because they don't have to worry about any shared border conflicts with other uh, portions of the <laughs> European Union. That's that's right. That's awesome. Right. <laughs> and I All thought right, they were cool. going with the EU one only because it's they felt like they had a better chance of getting that. The link is still Open Source Summit Europe, but the logo does not say Europe anymore. I saw that. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. This is awesome. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Ruth. Um, right on. So, uh, Yash, you are up. <laughs> we are not going to push your work. We're not going to push your work to the end. So why don't you uh, tell us what's going on? So everyone, uh, we are looking for a standard structure in the readme files for each working group repository. And here's the proposal, here's the structure, proposed structure it's on screen. So it's almost finalized. I just have to take uh, feedback from two more working groups. And if you have any other suggestions and feedback, that would be very helpful. Have you created a pull request for this working group yet? Uh, no. Okay. It's just an issue right now in each working group. Okay. I thought you created a pull request in at least one working group that I'm part of. But um, that wasn't. No, I don't think so. Oh, it wasn't. It wasn't. It was actually repo structure, not DB structure. Yeah, the repo is structure. Yeah. So if people have comments, you want to take us just a minute to take a look at this? This has been, as Yash had pointed out, through a couple iterations, I think with different people. After our after our com com community call, I wonder if um, something about under participate, you know, like are you new and some ultimately some reference to a mentoring program or guidance program or onboarding program for the project or working group. Well, we did I mean, just start the it's, it's an office ambition. hours Slack channel. Oh, that's probably in my mail. I invited you. Yeah. So, and Elizabeth put it into the chat too. Oh, 
the Slack channel for the office hours. Oh, sweet. Okay. We're going to get that going again. Excellent. And it shall not be co opted. <laughs> so we're going to be split between Slack and IRC? No, we never use, nobody we never ever uses use the IRC. IRC. Yeah. I'm in it. Well, how much traffic is on there? Not a whole lot. Oh, she's not. Okay. We tried. But yeah, yesterday it had came up that we don't really have a way to, in the chaos project, like the comments where the website is actually put together pretty nicely and carries a lot of information, but there's no like human first point of contact. Mm -hmm. And I know IRC could do it too, but Slack just as a way to kind of ask a human question and get a human response mm -hmm. to help people orient to the different spots in the project where they may have an interest. Yep. So, so we're going to uh, start. Yeah. Each ahead, yeah. working group is having a Slack channel, then we can add it in the participate section. They are. Yep. And so what um, Elizabeth had just put in the chat. That'll be open. That's just a universal chaos. Got a question. Post it there. Um, so are we planning to just have a single Slack channel or are we looking to, you know, create one for each working group also? Uh, I think right now it's just the former. Go ahead, Elizabeth. See you in I was just gonna say, <clears throat> there's a bunch of different channels. Um, we can add whatever. If we wanna do working groups, we can. Um, right now, we don't have that, so. I, I, I think I'd like hold on. I mean, my opinion would be hold off on like working groups for now, just because if we get too many channels, it gets too diffuse. Right. So for now, I guess we can just start uh, the universal one. Yeah. Yeah, and we are supposed to be starting in office hours on Zoom which is what the community call started out as years ago. Yeah. It turned into a, <laughs> it turned into a something with an agenda. Yeah. It was not exactly office hours, but yeah, doesn't mean we can't do it again. Right. What does it exactly mean on show office hours on Zoom? Uh, it's the office hours meeting just kind of like in a university or in a school setting. Like people can just stop by and- Let's call them welcome hours. Say hello. Right. I want to say Sean is a good idea there. Oh, and then welcome hours. Or social hours. So Justin just put something in the chat. Oh yeah. Uh, you you have to help. Here. You're going to. You, if you, you have a pointer, you can't just say that. <laughs> yeah, if you if you send if you send Matt Germantry a link, he'll put a grad student on figuring that out. No. <laughs> for for context, this is something that we're trying to figure out. In um, at least with work, we were trying to set up a private Slack server to a public uh -huh. like course chat room. Um, yeah. How familiar you are with Matrix or Element, but we have the, the IRC channel we already have is set up with a Matrix room. Matrix has integrations ready that support IRC, which we already have set up, as well as Slack. And actually, I've been using that bridge re recently. Um, and it works really nice. It actually is one of the best <clears throat> like chat bridges I've, I've worked with. So I think it's possible to still connect the folks that are in the IRC because like Amy mentioned it's like there's still folks that are there but you have to remember that everyone has different platform preferences and folks that have been doing open source for decades or, or many years are really familiar with IRC because that's been around since 1989 and you're just going to get different folks on different platforms so bridges can be really cool and since we already have a matrix room bridge to IRC a slack bridge is really easy to set up I'd be happy to chat with Ooh. someone like how to do that. That'd be great. Um, yeah. And don't we have a metric about this? <laughs> we have a metric that takes Slack communication into Chat. account somewhere. Chat platform inclusivity. Isn't there something to be said about that? <laughs> no, there's, there's, I've been part of discussing a metric that includes. Um, oh, we have a metric. 
No, I know. <laughs> I, I, and I just don't remember what working group it's in. It was in this one. Was it? Okay. Chat, chat platform inclusivity is actually something that Justin right. brought forward okay. as a metric. So, right. so, so the, the point, uh, job, Justin, Justin. maybe I'll, maybe I will connect with you. Um, so the point here is that the matrix is actually kind of a, the, the main point of entry and matrix serves as a way to kind of observe the IRC channel and participate in that channel and also observe the Slack channel and likewise participate in the Slack channel. Is that right? Yeah, so since we have just the one chaos community channel in IRC, that could be like a community channel on the Slack. And that would be the one. We could still have different working group rooms. And if we want to bridge those to IRC, we could cross that bridge later. Gotcha. But we have we could start with just the one community room or something like that. Gotcha. OK, I'll take a look. Is it? Do you have the link to Matrix? Yeah, just all matrix.com. That'd be cool. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Uh, yes, we are done. Yeah, yeah. Ash, do you have any? Any? It seems like people are okay with the standard structure on the README. We had a little detour there. Yeah, but I think the, we just adapted it, but that would apply to all working groups. Mm -hmm. Show me to open the issue, Yash. Or are we good? Uh, okay. Good. I'll, I'll so, stop here for right. a second. Do people have other thoughts on the README or kind of standardizing the README structure across working group repos? That's like a really good idea. Okay. That's the direct one. In case anybody wants a record of it. Right on. I'll go back to minutes. Okay. Thank you. All right. So let's Thank see. You. It's, 33 minutes after the hour. Um, there are a couple things that I wanted to kind of address. It, so I'm on the updating attendee demographics. So Sean, can you go back go about to the minutes? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm, I'm here on this spot right now. So if you recall the conversation last time is four events, um, so let's let me, hold on just a second. Um, I'm going to drop a link in here. Oops. OK, so on the, the spreadsheet that I just dropped in there, Sean, can you click on yep. the top spreadsheet? So you know, we have this spreadsheet where we track our metrics work, right? And so we have a couple of metrics called speaker demographics and attendee demographics. And one of the issues was these are both, so every metric that you see kind of in green between 15 and 24 are metrics that we use for the uh, DEI event badging initiative. So as events submit their request for a badge, these are the these are the questions that we ask, right? So how attentive are they to speaker demographics? How attentive are they to diversity access tickets? Do they have an event code of conduct clearly visible on the, on the event page, right? And so the, the, when we were doing the DEI badging, we were kind of seeing that a lot of the questions around speaker demographics and attendee demographics were quite similar. Like, how are you capturing this information? How are you displaying this information? Um, and the, the thought was last week that perhaps we kind of collapse these two metrics just into a metric called demographics. And have speakers so be that, a speak, a sort of a box that you check for a speaker attendee. Yeah. Yep. So then demographics could be something that we could ask across the project at large within particular areas. So we could ask questions then about speaker demographics. We could ask questions then about attendee demographics. We could ask uh, things that are more less event focused and maybe more project focused with respect to demographics as well. So kind of creating a, a meta higher metric. level, yeah, single, single order metric called demographics that could then be localized to the particular area. 
Um, so, um, let's see. So I'm kind of in this spot right there. So if you click on the GitHub link, or the, um, there's a link to another Google Doc over here, this one. There's a pull um, request. Go down. And the go down, yeah, that one right there. Oh, shoot. That's Thanks. me, hold on. Sorry, I could probably if I had seen the login as chaos, it would have worked. There we go, it looks like I have access now. Anyway, the idea was to make a, a more universal demographics metric. And I'm just kind of curious as to what people's thoughts are on this. I assume what's in here that is derived from what we currently have. Yeah, so some of the text that you're seeing in here is the text that exist, existed in the attendee demographics metric. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean, some of this needs okay, to be yeah. like broadened a little bit. Yeah. So do you want to do that collaboratively right now, or do we want to assign an action item to for someone to bring the current two metrics together in draft form? Um, so what I wanted first was just to get people's feedback on this. We had talked about it last week. <laughs> just because we talked about it last week doesn't maybe make it so. Um, so what are people's thoughts on if you go back to that spreadsheet, Sean. Yep, spreadsheet, merging these two. Yeah, kind of basically merging those two into a single metric called demographics. And then from there, we can ask demographics, demographics questions at events, but we could also ask demographics, demographic questions within the project. So are people still okay with this? I, um, from my perspective, the badging project, uh, the badging initiative has um, two different metrics that ask the exact same questions with respect to both types of demographics. So we have like, do, uh, um, do you request demographic information? Do you display that demographic, demographic information after the event or like that kind of thing? Well, we, we have, we've all, if we've changed it or whatever, we've always had the same questions for both speakers and attendees. So it makes a lot of sense to merge them to me. Okay. There are some differences between the two that we'll have to find that, like how that nuance works in the badging project, but I think it makes sense as a metric to merge them. And then okay, so you think that the, the go ahead. No, you go ahead. So Matt, you think the nuanced difference can just be handled in the badging project itself? In the metric, and then we can find out from the metric how to do it in the badging project. Okay. But it's really just like, um, a matter of how speakers and attendees are handled differently, I think is small enough that it can be managed in one metric. Gotcha, thank you. When it comes to demographics. I think maybe when we build the metric, we haven't done any of this to my recollection, but implicitly we have like require that a type is indicated. Like how is this being gathered for the speakers, the attendees or a uh, project itself? Mm -hmm. All right. So Sean, if you scroll down a little bit, mm -hmm. um, keep going. So I, am I there? Um, where did I put it? Yeah, hold on, stop. Oh, so row 68. Okay, row 68 right here, demographics. Ah. I, had, I had proposed just, so at some point it's gonna move out of events. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had proposed just kind of putting so that's the same link to that other document. Okay, should I follow that now? Oh, right. You've already, you've already I mean, I, I'll, I'll work on it. If, I just wanted this still just kind of ensure that people were okay with this switch. And I'm just starting to build out the tracking here in the spreadsheet. Yeah. In so we that would add, case, yeah. I think we have a large mm -hmm. enough difference mm -hmm. between events and projects that we could have event demographics and project demographics, um, personally. Um, because the, they're measured in different ways and they mean different things to each entity. Okay, that's fair. People's thoughts on that? You know, I, I don't know. I, I think there's a lot of information gathering that goes into having demographics information, um, even for an event or a project. And, and I think um, that 
like uh, I don't I don't I, I mean I think like right now when you look at the the questions from the attendee demographics um, obviously like things like interviews are less plausible for like a project um, and so I mean it, I think as, as this develops just kind of work into the nuance of whether or not they're separate because I don't know for sure right now I think Matt's point is well taken though, yeah. like with like in terms of like data collection strategies, mm -hmm. like a lot of what we ask is like, is this part of the event registration? Is it part of speaker registration? Like, here's how you can collect this information. Right. And yeah. then we also turn around and with event demographics say things like, have you displayed your demographics from prior events? Do you have a mechanism by which you will display the demographics with associated with this event? Mm -hmm. and so that that process, I think, is what Matt is getting at. Like that yeah. process is different than the then process I, by which you would determine for a project. For a project, and we may keeping those separate is might be helpful. Like the 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 story could still be similar at the top, but just kind mm -hmm. of the mechanisms by which that's done could be different. Is that right, Matt? Yeah, because because events happen, they're like time bound and they, they happen in a certain period of time. While projects are an ongoing thing, you have people applying to events. You don't necessarily have people applying to open source projects. So it's a lot different how you collect their demographic information, uh, that kind of thing. Just all these little differences. Yeah, I think that's fair. Uh, so actually, I'm going to put in the minutes, actually, event demographics. Is one metric. Okay, good. Thank you. Any any other comments from people? Anybody? I have no more. <laughs> no, I think um, I'm, I'm not hearing any violent opposition. I'm good. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. Thank you. So this is great. So uh, you can put me down as an action item to kind of start splitting these out okay. as, as two different things. All right. Wow. Very fancy. Um, yeah, it found, it found there's me. a there's a pull request for this one, but I assume that you're not ready to merge that yet for three. For Probably three. not just because, okay. yeah, yeah, just because there's going to be some okay. changes, like more fun, fundamental shifting. I may actually just close that PR without merging it and start over. Okay. Actually, why don't we do that right now? Let's All just right. close that. I can PR. close that. Actually. Uh, yeah. uh, I just closed no, it. It's can... fine. No, 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 no. It's it's fine because I can just it. go back and well, I can just look at it because there were a few subtle differences. The one of the earlier problems with this metric was that it was it was asking questions about demographics and inclusivity. Right. It was. It was two doing purposes. two things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so that then in that response. I, let me see if I have it. Okay, so I thought I had put it in the minutes, but I guess I didn't. Shouldn't you be able to find the closed pull request? Yeah, yeah, I will, yes. <laughs> yeah. No, it's gone forever, right? You close it and poof. <laughs> Let's see. So there's then on the minutes, So Sean, do you see that link that I just added? Yes. No. That's yes, that one. one. Correct. The this one you just one. highlighted. No. This yep. one. Yep. Okay. So this will be the new one, the new document for. Yeah, exactly. Screen. So then, if you can, I mean, there's nothing on it, but you can click that. Oh, that's a handy. Yeah, I never saw that before. That. It's the first time I've seen that. Like you can get rid of those giant links. Giant links. Little docs getting smarter all the time. 
That's cool. And so this is our template for folks new to what mm -hmm. we do. Yeah, so this would be more along the lines of, so Matt, I'm looking at you again a little bit. See you, Justin. Bye, Justin. Um, so Matt, I'm looking at you a little bit here too. We, what happened to my, my view of people? Um, we are starting to ask this question, I think, in the BNI badging program, is that right? Or questions like this? The questions of the inclusive experience at the event? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's that's a big a big chunk of what we're asking about in general, but um, what in specific? So like, um, like how the event is reaching out to participants to ensure that they feel included yeah. in a variety of different ways. And so that could be, if I recall like prior conversations that there are like DEI meetups at the event, or there are, there's an explicit attention to um, ensuring that DEI related talks are integrated throughout the conference. Does this sound familiar? Yeah, this kind of comes into like, what effort are they doing? Are they placing to, mm -hmm. to, to see to ensure that their event is like inclusive that that it comes down to like how much time and work are they putting into it and how much focus mm -hmm. to so so what effort is the event putting to yeah and the effort for sure. events is different than the effort for projects it's a different kind of work so yeah more and more this is fairly clearly these are two different metrics and um, So thank you. And then I think the objectives would be to like. Oh, um, Sean, could you hop over to yeah, the yeah. yeah, this is something in its own. Yeah. I should be hopped back to that page. Ensure. Thank you. <laughs> um, uh, like the. Ensure an inclusive experience at the event. Not to be attendees. Have, um, yep, I know we really have one minute um, to express concerns regarding. Does that make sense? Yes. Ensuring um, that um, organizing. Can you fix that for me? I love how yep, people. Yep. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Organizing teams are attentive. Uh, wording. Yeah, we can. Are attentive. Are attentive to, to, to you know to including newcomers from different you know. To like a, building. In, to the schedule. All right, I'll think about this, but the okay. great 80s band, but cool. All right. All right. So we are at the end of time. I heard my phone tell me as such. All right. Um, this is really helpful. So thank you, everybody. Um, really good. Thanks, Yash, for all of your work on doing that. I'm glad you got to talk through it today. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get pushed. So everybody, uh, have a good week, and we will see you around. Take care, all. Thank you. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye, Bye. See you in June. Bye. Oh, yeah, Matt. Bye.